Hey guys, just out, getting a walk in here. And uh, today we're gonna check out Dorico, and we're gonna look at these auxiliary parts. We're gonna see how to make your rack players love you, and how to organize that stuff just a little bit quicker and easier through this uh, super powerful notation software. Um, I'm no expert in it yet, but I've been pretty much 100% Dorico for the last two weeks, and really getting into it. It's pretty cool. So here's what it looks like when we get into Dorco. So we're going to start a new project here and we're going to add a solo player because we just have one guy and let's uh, give him some instruments. How about let's start with a splash symbol and we'll go ahead and add some more to him. How about the ribbon crasher and how about one more bass drum? Okay, so he has all those. You can carry it down and see everything. Um, you can actually adjust these two like for the ribbon crasher. Let's go ahead and change the note head here into just the ornate style because that looks cooler okay so then we can go over to the right and you know what let me open this up a little bit more because you guys don't need to see my desktop going page to page here or different screen is a lot like main stage uh they also made it easy you can see as i mouse over that that all you have to do is hit command and go to Command three is engrave, command four is play, command five is print. So we just go over to play. Uh, then we're gonna add a splash symbol. So we gotta go to contact, and we're gonna go ahead and go into this 8DO Aria Studio sounds and find the splash symbol. So symbols, splash, we have four different sounds. Pretty simple. All right, and we're gonna call these our natural shaft of the stick, shoulder, and tip. It's in MIDI channel one. We're good to go. Um, now we need to create a percussion map. So we're gonna go down here to percussion maps, and we're gonna go ahead and add, we'll call it 8DO, not, oh, 8DO splash, man. All right. And then in the drum kit note map, this is where um, things get a little bit complicated. I know that that first note is gonna be a C, and that's MIDI note 36. This is gonna be our natural sound. And for playing techniques, we could say that this is the natural. And so anytime that we don't have an articulation, it's going to choose this sound. Cool, then the next one we have is gonna be a little bit stronger. That was our, our shaft sound. And you can name these whatever you want. And then on our playing techniques though, um, we there is a, if we go under stick, there is shoulder, tip, but all that stuff. But we actually want that to have a articulation to it. So we're gonna say this is gonna be accent, all right? And then on the shoulder, again, we have to choose splash. We're gonna do a tenuto when we want the shoulder sound. And we have one more and we're gonna go ahead and go um, splash. And in here, uh, we're gonna say tip. So we have some things that'll be triggered just by uh, putting an accent on. And then we're gonna have another layer uh, just for the stick tip in case we want that. Then we have to go over here to the VST instrument, hit the cog and select our per new percussion map that we just made. Now we can go right. And let's go ahead and go accent, then natural, then a tenuto, then how about another accent? And that'll give us this first couple sounds that we want. Cool, so that just did all that. Uh, now to get this to that tip though, we're gonna have to go back to setup, go to our playing techniques, and we're gonna just need to add that other playing technique. Then we'll hit okay. So now when we select, just go to right. When we go to select this note, I have some options. And all I'm doing is going up and down. Oh, and I should show you this too. If we go back to setup, let's change the tip note head to something different. Let's go ahead and do the this old style diamond. All right, so that's gonna be when we, when we play a tip. And then now when I go to tip, it just changes it. So there's not another step. It just does it right away, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's go to the ribbon crasher. Go to play again. 
and we're going to add another instrument to our contact player. This time our Ribbon Crasher is going to come from the old faithful VDL and we have just a left and a right hit. Real simple. So we'll make another quick percussion map. We'll call this one VDL Ribbon Crasher. Okay, and then we're done. We'll go back to the cog. We're going to add it here, VDL Ribbon Crasher. And then we'll go back to right. And we'll play it, we'll put a couple more notes in. If we want to do this uh, and do left and rights, it's real easy. There you go. Okay. And then we're going to do one more with the bass drum. And we're going to do this out of the play library. So we're going to have to add another VST. I think the regular hits down here. There we go. So we have muffled first, then natural, and then then a roll. Okay, and then we'll do another play, expression map, add this. Okay, last couple things we gotta do, we gotta change this over to play. Make sure that's in the first channel. And then we got to make sure that over here, our percussion map is set to our bass drum. Now we go back to right and let's go ahead and add some notes here. All right, so here's how that sounds. So that sounds, that sounds pretty decent. And uh, here's the whole thing played back. Okay, so now that we've written our part, it's really easy to get this thing ready to go. All we have to do is switch over to page view and look at that. It already did all the instrument changes. Okay, so say we have a new kid show up at Bandcamp and we need to split up this part. All we have to do is add another player. Remember Dorco looks at people as what they're holding in their hands. And so let's say that he needs to play this bass drum part. So uh, all we have to do is grab it and drop it in here. And now he has the bass drum parts, all of them. Now, say you wanted to make the rack part look a little bit more traditional in a five line, almost like a drum set. It's really easy to do that too. Let's add another player here. And we're gonna create an empty kit. We're gonna create it with all the instruments that we already have. Okay, cool, so that's done. And we'll hit close, and you'll see that right now it's in a three line um, setup, but that's really easy to fix. We can just go and change that in the settings under players, percussion, five line, apply. And as soon as you click in here, it's gonna give you the note head that is supposed to be on each part. Okay, so if we played that back, it wouldn't work quite yet because we don't have sounds assigned. So we'll just go over to play. And there you go. And that's how you can set up this in a more traditional way. It does not tell you uh, the instrument changes. So you might have to make a key or make some text, but I think not having to mess around with all the node heads and stuff makes things pretty fast and uh, is, is quite a game changer for me. Uh, when you do it this way, you will not be able to break things up in case that kid comes in at Bandcamp because it's looking at that all as one instrument now. That's what that's what you've created. You can do this with anything. Um, if you have a keyboard section and you know you want your congas to move from your marimba part to your xylo, it's really easy to just drag and drop it over there. Um, and you can also drag it and drop it back into the percussion land. Um, I can add to here. I could add this bass drum part if I wanted it and that it just would look like that. And obviously I could change how this looks so that it would be a five line instead of a single line, but that's all preference. And this is just the way that Dorco is set up from the get go. So um, hope you enjoyed this.